Hey everybody, I'm Elizabeth McSwan from Emac and Hedwig, and today's video is about things to consider when you're buying a long lens for wildlife. So here we go. When you're buying a wildlife lens like any piece of photography gear, there's a lot to think about because there are just a lot of options and so I wanted to share my thoughts on kind of how to go about buying a wildlife lens. This isn't going to be brand specific or lens specific. This is going to be more general. So it doesn't really matter what camera system you shoot on. So hopefully this will be helpful to anybody who's looking for a wildlife lens. The first thing that I want to talk about is budget. Budget is of course extremely important. It's really the first thing that you have to know before going out there and buying a lens. You have to know kind of how much money you have to spend. Related to budget is also whether or not you are open to buying used gear. Oftentimes buying used gear can make something attainable that new is just simply not attainable. One thing to note if you are interested in buying used gear is to get it from a reputable source and a place that has a return policy. So you as the buyer are protected if you get scammed by somebody who is offering just kind of a lemon of a lens or a lens that is damaged in some way or is just not really as advertised. And so you have some protection there if you need to return it. So make sure there's a return policy, make sure that you know kind of the time frame that you're looking at. Also to make sure that as soon as you get that lens, that you really put it through its paces, you test it out, you scrutinize the images that you're getting with it to make sure that it is something that you really want to have. So that if you do need to return the lens, you can do it within the time frame and get your money back. The next few things I want to talk about are going to be kind of lumped together. And those things are maximum aperture, focal length, and weight. So I'm going to talk about weight first. What constitutes a heavy lens is really, really subjective. So I personally think that like say a 100 to 400 millimeter lens is lightweight. That's a pretty lightweight lens for wildlife. But for people that are just getting into wildlife photography, a 100 to 400 lens could be really, really huge and a little bit daunting to have to carry around. Also, a lot of people don't want to have to use a tripod with their lens. They want to be able to go out there and handhold their lens without having to lug a tripod or a monopod around, which I have to say, I was one of those people. When I first started looking for a wildlife lens, I really wanted a lens that I didn't have to put on a tripod. I wanted something that I could hand hold. But in the end, I really wanted a fast aperture lens and I wanted a longer focal length lens. So I basically just said to myself, well, I guess I'm using a tripod. Having to use a tripod with your wildlife lens is really annoying. It of course adds more expense because not only do you need a really sturdy tripod, you also need a tripod head. And while you can use a ball head, and I do use my ball head for certain types of photography, wildlife photography, I am most of the time on a gimbal head. So those additional expenses is really something to keep in mind. And also tripods are just a pain to lug around. They're just cumbersome and I would rather not bring mine. However, there are some real advantages to having a tripod, even with a lens that you can hand hold. The first one, of course, that you hear a lot is that you can get a lot cleaner images because you don't have to worry as much about camera shake. You just have to worry about subject movement. So depending on what you're photographing, you can dial your shutter speed a lot slower because you don't need to compensate for the fact that you might have a little bit of camera shake due to a, a, a shutter speed that just doesn't work. Another thing that's really beneficial about using a tripod is being able to get shots that you probably wouldn't have gotten if you didn't have one. Because no matter what wildlife lens you're shooting with, whether it's the 100 to 400 or the 800 56 lens, any lens that you have, no matter how heavy, you are going to eventually want to put it down. It's that's just the way that it is. But if you have your lens on a tripod, you can really take advantage of just being able to keep your eye in the viewfinder and capture shots that you probably wouldn't have been able to get because by the time 
you see a potential shot and you bring your camera from like wherever you're holding it, probably around your waist or hips, you bring it up to your face, you compose your shot, you focus, you click the button, the moment is probably gone. As opposed to just having your eye in the viewfinder, finger on the shutter button, and just being able to do, you know, So as an example, I'm gonna tell you guys a little story. One of the first times I went out with my Canon 500F4, I got an old used Canon 500F4 as my first wildlife lens. One of the first times I went out with that lens, I went to a refuge that was pretty close to Boston. It's kind of marshy and I'd never been there before, but there had been a report there of short-eared owl sightings the night before. And so I went specifically for short-eared owls and I didn't find any, but what I did find was a snowy owl just right there out in the marsh, like fairly close to areas that I had access to. And I just thought, this is awesome. So I set up my camera, my tripod, my lens. I picked a spot where the owl was fairly large in my frame and I still felt like I was far enough away where I wasn't gonna spook the owl because I didn't want to be a jerk. I didn't want to spook the owl, but I did want to get a shot of it taking off from that marsh grass and flying off into the evening, maybe somewhere else to go hunting or whatever. I'm there, my lens is pointed at the bird and the light is getting lower and lower and better and better. And I'm like, okay, like it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. And as owls do, it faked me out multiple times where I thought it was about to fly and it didn't, but it's getting really kind of very golden hour-y. And so I have my eye up to the viewfinder and I'm kind of holding, you know, my, my camera with my right hand and my lens with my left hand. And I hear, and I feel, cause I'm on a boardwalk, I feel somebody else who turned out to be another photographer coming up the boardwalk towards me, you know, clomp, 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 clomp. And he was just really aggressive. I don't think intentionally, but he went by me. And shortly after that, the owl took off and it flew down the marsh and landed not too far away, but it landed like not close enough for a photo from where we were standing. And the other photographer who had flushed the bird was so oblivious that he didn't even realize that he had done it until it had already landed down the marsh. Uh, but I, because I was ready to go, because I had that camera to my eye with my finger on the button, I got like, I think three or four shots of that bird taking off and flying away. And it was so exciting. It was like, yes, yes, I got it. I got that bird. And so that was one of my favorite stories of photographing a snowy owl was that particular shot because even though somebody else was kind of the jerk, at least I wasn't the jerk, right? So that's an example of a shot that I really wouldn't have gotten if I was using a lens that I was hand holding. Because by the time that I saw that owl was going to fly, bringing my bringing my camera if i if i was just hanging out with my camera down by my hips bringing my camera up to my face finding the owl in my viewfinder focusing on it clicking the button to take the photo like the moment would have been gone obviously using a tripod you're not going to get every shot and there're going to be times that because you're using a tripod you're going to miss shots i personally think having a tripod is a lot more beneficial than not having one and i know this video isn't like Yay, tripods, like that's not, that's not the point of this video. But um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about that because I feel like people put a very, like they put a lot of importance on having a lightweight lens and not having to lug around something that's really heavy. And while I do understand that, and of course people have different mobility issues and people you know, have shoulder issues or they're hobbyists, they'd rather keep it kind of more casual and that's totally fine. All I'm saying is that Getting a tripod was the best thing that I could have done for my photography. And at the time I was really fighting that. I'm glad that I was able to see the benefit and of course through experience, experience the benefit of having a tripod. The next thing I wanna talk about is aperture because aperture more than anything else, I mean, yes, there's image quality to consider, there's AF speed, that kind of stuff. But really when it comes to the long telephoto primes, the 500 F4s, the 600 F4s, the 400 2.8s, the 800s, you know, the, all those lenses, what you're really paying for, in my opinion, is aperture. You're paying for all of the light, right? And of course, these lenses are extremely expensive and they're just not really, uh, 
feasible for a lot of people. So then it becomes really a question of, do I get sort of a faster lens that's shorter or do I get a longer lens that's maybe not as fast? And really that's not something that I can I can help you with. That's a really personal decision that you guys are gonna have to make, but there are some things to consider and namely what sort of habitats you typically shoot. If you shoot on say like beaches, if you shoot shorebirds a lot of the time, ducks, things that are on the water, I would say probably you could work with a smaller aperture because those environments tend to not have a lot of sort of dark environments. There's nothing really to obscure the light there. You might get an overcast day, but in terms of like trees and stuff really obscuring the light, you're really not gonna have that. But if you like to shoot, say, warblers or birds that are in darker environments like woods, you might consider a shorter focal length that's faster uh, because typically those lenses are a little less expensive. Like say a 300 to eight, uh, you can definitely get not on the Sony system, unfortunately, unless you're gonna be using an adapter, but certainly on the Nikon and Canon uh, camera systems, there are definitely 300 to eights that I would think you could get uh, used for considerably less then maybe you put you know you throw a teleconverter on there and you can get a little bit more reach that way there are ways in which if you wanted a little bit more light maybe you sacrifice a little bit of focal length there and you can kind of figure out um, kind of what combination of aperture and focal length really works for you because generally speaking you're gonna have to choose one over the other unfortunately. The last thing that I want to talk about is minimum focusing distance. Minimum focusing distance, for those of you who don't know what it is, is basically the least amount of distance that you need between your focal plane and your camera. And I think it's the sensor. So between that your subject and your sensor for your camera and lens to be able to focus on it. So if you have a lens that is say a minimum focusing distance of eight feet, you need at least that distance in order to focus on your subject. And if your subject comes within that distance, if it comes to, you know, maybe seven feet or even six feet away from you, you're out of luck. <laughs> you know, you're not going to be able to focus on that subject, unfortunately. I don't really think that a lot of people discuss minimum focusing distance a lot in these videos, but for wildlife photography especially, I really think that it's something to consider when you're looking at long lenses. Typically with the longer lenses, the minimum focusing distance is further away from you. So for instance, on the Sony system, the 600 F4 has a minimum focusing distance of just under 15 feet, as opposed to the new two to 600 Sony that has a minimum focusing distance of, I think it's just under eight feet. So at the 600 millimeter focal length, yes, the two to six lets in less light, but it gets you, as long as you can get a subject close to you, it gets you like twice as close to that subject, right? Because the minimum focusing distance is so much shorter. So that's something to consider when looking at wildlife lenses because, you know, yes, you can use the 600 F4 with a teleconverter. You can get kind of tighter and closer on your subject than you can with the two to six. However, um, it's just, I personally think that it's really cool that the two to 600 and a lot of the other lenses, the two, one to hundred to 400 lenses, and even the Sigma and Tamron, you know, 150 to 600, I think also have minimum focusing distance that are around that around eight feet or so. And it just allows you to get closer than you could if you were using a really big lens. So it's just something to think about, um, something to consider as you move forward with your wildlife lens purchases. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I hope this video was helpful. I hope that you like it. If you do like it, please click the thumbs up button. Please subscribe to my channel. It would really help me out a lot. You can also find me on Instagram. I post a lot of my work on Instagram. It's the best way to see it. And there's also Patreon. For as little as $2 a month, you can get early access to videos like this along with a bunch of other really cool stuff. So I hope to see you over there. Until the next video, everyone, take care. Happy adventuring, happy shooting. See you later. Bye.